Hello. In addition to the out-of-the-box components that are included in the Magic XPI Studio, the Connector Builder lets you build, distribute and sell professional looking connectors. The main features of the Magic XPI Connector Builder are the ability to combine a step and a trigger in a single connector, as with the included components, and to create customised configuration user interfaces for both of these modes. Out-of-the-box support for studio utilities, such as text search and cross-reference. Data mapper support for dynamic steps. Java or .NET runtime technology. Runtime isolation and class loading. Licensing validation, which means you can license the connector and distribute it without source code. And encryption functionality. The first step in creating a connector is to define a basic connector using the connector build utility. The utility is the glue that links all the different parts of the connector together. A connector can consist of a trigger, a step, a resource, a service, errors, an icon, a name and a description. This diagram shows these parts in greater detail. Let's have a brief tour around the Connector Builder Utility now. The Connector Builder Utility is open via the Start menu. The Connector Repository that we see here contains all the connectors that you've developed as well as any other open source connectors like the MQTT connector that are provided with the installation. Taking the MQTT connector as an example, we'll have a look at the different parts of the utility. The general settings screen that you see here is the utility itself. In the upper part of the utility screen, we see the name and the description of the connector, which version it is, and where it'll be located in the toolbox. We also define the default interface and there's also an encryption key. And in this field you can generate a license for your created connector. In the lower part of the utility screen we see two tabs one for step definition and one for trigger definition. Let's have a look at step definition now. Here you can select dynamic which will let you use your own configuration screen. There's also static which gives you a standard interface with a grid-like table. If you do select dynamic you need to create and provide a .NET class for implementing the user interface. To make it easier for you to start off working with the connector builder, you can click the Generate UI Project button to generate the user interface part of a basic pre-configured project. You can define whether or not you need a corresponding resource for your new connector and you can click the Configure Resource button to configure the resource's properties. These properties include everything that you would expect to see in a Magic XPI resource, including the resource name, description, password field support, environment variables, and combo box values when required. In addition, you can opt to have a validate button and also you can add any other buttons that your resource needs. Here you can tell Magic XPI to warn the connector's end user that a resource needs to be configured before the connector can be used. The next fields are related to runtime. Here the runtime technology field lets you determine whether to use Java or .NET code when the server calls your connector. You need to provide a Java or .NET class to implement the runtime interface 
as before to get you started with the connector builder you can click the generate runtime project button to generate the runtime part of a basic pre-configured project and again you can define an error to be generated at runtime if you don't have a resource defined for your connector and if necessary you can define methods for your connector here now let's have a look at trigger definition in the trigger tab we see a lot of the same fields you can have a dynamic user interface for your trigger or a static one and as with step definition if you select dynamic you need to create and provide a .NET class for implementing the user interface you can define whether or not you need a corresponding service for your new connector and you can click the configure service button to configure the services properties and here we see all the usual properties that you'd expect in a magic XPI service as with the resource definition mentioned before you can opt to have a validate button and you can also add any other buttons that your service needs and as with resources you can tell magic XPI to warn the connectors end user that a service needs to be configured before the connector can be used you can define your runtime technology either Java or .NET and create and provide a class to implement the interface and also as with resources you can define an error to be generated at runtime if you don't have a service defined for your connector you define the behavior of the trigger from here external means that the trigger code itself controls when it's going to call a flow and whether the trigger is sync or async sync means that your code will be blocked until the flow is executed and returned back async means that once you've managed to send a message to magic xpi you will be able to send a new message immediately without waiting you can define errors for both step and trigger connectors by clicking the errors button these errors will be displayed in the studio and you can handle exceptions based on these error codes when you finish configuring the connector using the utility you'll end up with a folder with the same name that you gave your connector in the following location this folder contains several important folders the UI lib folder which contains the UI DLLs the runtime Java lib folder which contains the runtime jar files that you create for the runtime part and the runtime.net lib folder which contains the runtime DLLs that you create for the runtime part this is empty in this case because the MQTT component is Java based this concludes the first stage of building your own connector you now need to write the code for your new connectors user interface which is beyond the scope of this clip you can find more detailed information in the magic XPI connector builder PDF located in your magic XPI installations help folder today we had a brief look at the magic XPI connector builder I hope you'll join me again soon for some more magic